The decision was made to move 1218 from the Roanoke Transportation Museum to the Birmingham Steam Shops in May of 1985 and begin her rebuilding. All the appliances, grates, and rocker mechanisms would be removed and rebuilt or recast. Cracks in the front engine frame would have to be repaired by contract welders. Stripped to the naked boiler, parts are revealed that had not been seen since she was built. New tubes, flues, and superheater elements have to be built. With the internal elements rebuilt and repaired, the boiler is now ready for reassembly. Driving boxes are remachined and new running gear brasses are made. The drivers have been carefully removed, one set at a time. They are lifted by the shop crane and moved to the wheel lathe. The drivers can then be turned to meet precise wheel specifications. All four crossheads and crosshead guides have been removed and rebuilt to their original precision specifications. The original A's were designed using alligator type crosshead guides. New delivery pipes to the rear cylinders are cast and fitted. During 1218's stint as an auxiliary boiler at Union Carbide in the 60s, she had been refitted for liquid fuel. The tender from CNO 614 is modified for use as an auxiliary water bottle. Southern's big wrecker is called in to carefully lift the massive boiler off the supporting blocks so that the front engine can be replaced. This will be the biggest and heaviest part of the rebuilding process. In other parts of the shop, Southern steam machinists are busy fabricating a new drawbar pin and several hundred grease fittings. With the boiler properly elevated, the front frame and drivers are pushed into position by a diesel switcher. Finally, the heavy supporting blocks are removed. Preparations are made for installing the front engine. Wood shims are used to adjust the height of the front drivers for proper fitting to the rear engine. As with any job of this magnitude, unforeseen problems arise. As the engine is eased onto the shims, the drivers on the number two axle slip out of their prepared alignment. The drivers will have to be repositioned with great difficulty. At last, the engine is properly aligned and can be slipped into place. The rebuilt trailing truck has already been installed. With all major assemblies in position, 1218 is ready for boiler lagging and additional sheet metal work. The new pride of the N and W will be painted and rolled out of the shop to begin her new life. Hi, I'm Doug Karn, Master Mechanic Steam for Norfolk Southern Corporation. And this is our new locomotive, N&W 1218 Class A, that we've just finished rebuilding here at Norfolk Southern Shop. I'd like to take you on a short tour around the locomotive and show you a few of the operating parts. This is one of the main cylinders of the locomotive. It transmits the power from the energy of the steam to mechanical energy to turn the wheels. It's 26 inches by 30 inches in dimensions. The force is transmitted back through the main crosshead here then into the main rod, back to the main crank pin. Force is then transmitted to each of the driving wheels by way of the side rods. This is one of the locomotive's two steam-driven air compressors. It generates compressed air utilizing boiler steam for the air brakes on the locomotive and for the train. This is one of the four mechanical lubricators on the locomotive. Each one of these lubricators supplies oil to approximately 20 different locations, thereby ensuring that all parts of the locomotive are lubricated and can run free. This is the power reverse cylinder of the locomotive. It enables the engineer with very little effort to move these heavy valve gear parts, thereby reversing the locomotive or placing it in any cutoff that he would happen to select. This is the second set of cylinders on this locomotive. The function of the parts are much the same as the front set, we have a crosshead, a main rod, main crank pin, and side rods 
to transmit the power from the boiler. This is the injector, one of the two devices on the locomotive for supplying the boiler with water. It utilizes steam and sucks water from the tender, forcing it through a series of nozzles and jets into the boiler. The rear portion of the locomotive boiler is the firebox. Inside of this area here is where the coal is burned to make the heat to generate the steam. The lower portion of this is the ash pan where all the ashes and cinders collect after the coal is burned. The reborn 1218 can now be rechristened. I want to say this is the finest steam engine ever built anywhere, anytime. Now that doesn't take anything away from the 611, which is the finest passenger steam engine ever built. Right. But this is a freight and passenger engine. I think it's the most powerful engine running in the world today. It's certainly the most powerful engine that's ever been restored to service. I'm tremendously proud of the people that made this possible here in Birmingham. Without them, it would not have happened. I'm glad they've had a part in it, taking it out of the Ronald Oak Park and bringing it back to life. It was great pleasure that I christened the 1218. I rechristened it. And it wouldn't be fair to call it anything but the 1218 because that's what it is. The world's most powerful and the best steam engine ever built. So I christen these 1218. Are you ready? Well, we're ready.